Okay. So now waiting, waiting, waiting. Waiting, waiting, waiting. Waiting, waiting, waiting. Emma needs to go up a bit. Can you keep it on? Keep it up. It won't stay up. Won't stay. Well, you can get it. But I it. It's because I'm clever. Oh, got to say something. So I got to say. people watching already. Yeah, because you're live. I know. Okay. Hello. I'm Kath Armstrong from the Cheapskates Club. You all know that anyway, but, you know, I have to do the right thing and introduce myself. So now I've done that, let's get started with tonight's show, which is all about, sorry, there go my hands again. I talk with my hands, so forgive me for waving them. I'll try not to. Tonight we're going to talk about the Bare Bones Growth Challenge. Now, Traditionally, February for cheapskates has always been a no-spend month, and it still is. Don't get me wrong, we're still not spending any money, but I'm tying it in. Hannah's rolling her eyes. She doesn't understand what not spending money is because we just don't normally, not unless it's budgeted anyway. But I'm tying it in with um, a chat about the Bare Bones Grocery Challenge, and I'm doing that tonight because... A number of things have occurred in the last couple of weeks where people have come to me and they've lost their job. Um, they have found out they're having another baby. Um, they have to move house. A few different things like that. And we also have quite a few Australians who will be struggling for a very long time thanks to the bushfires in Tasmania and the in far north Queensland. Through no fault of their own, these people are going to find it really difficult for a very long time. So I thought I'd go over the Bare Bones Grocery Challenge and how it's an, a simple way in the short term to get some or to save some money to have some spare cash to use for things that you need. Um, it's pretty much $30 for the week for food, breakfast, lunch, tea, for a family of four. It's not gourmet dining. It's not my kitchen rules dining. It's um, certainly not Jamie Oliver. It's certainly not convenient in terms of open the packet and there it is. But it is three meals a day that will fill tummies and cost you around $30 a week. Now, I don't want you to um, stick to that $30 a week and start saying, well, I can't do it for that because my eggs are $3 a dozen and my butter's whatever. Ignore the price. It's, it's just a figure. Just ignore it and look at the um, meal plan. Look at the recipes and look at what you already have in your fridge, your pantry and your freezer that you can use to survive without going to the shopping centre, without running to the corner store, without picking up and dialing a Domino's pizza for a week and see how much money you don't spend on groceries. Now, I first, I came across my original Bare Bones grocery list oh, way back when the website, when I first started the website, which was way back in 2000. Yes, the year of the Y2K bug that didn't happen, but never mind. So I came across a list that I wish I'd had when disaster struck for us because it would have saved me an awful lot of angst and an awful lot of worry about how I was going to feed my babies. Um, and I adapted it to suit what we ate and how much money I would have in in a, an emergency or in a cash crisis. So back in um, 2002, I first published it as an article on cheapskates and I've gone back and revised it in 2003, 2007, 2011 and 2017. Now, when I had a look at it again today, which is roughly two years on, the prices are pretty much the same. 
they haven't really changed much, which is why I left it at the feed a family of four for thirty dollars a week. Um, back in two thousand and seventeen, I actually did this challenge with three families in Perth. Do you remember going to Perth with me, Han? Yeah. And we took three families with the shopping list to the supermarket, to different supermarkets, and got them to buy the items on the shopping list. And then we worked out the meals that they could have for that week. And they all came in at under, actually under the $30, which was really good. So if I can do it, and if those three families can do it, you can too. And it's not focusing on the number, it's focusing on you and what you can do with what you have and then adding to it and that's the secret most of us have some staples in our pantry there will be salt there will be pepper there may be garlic powder there may be honey vegemite peanut butter there may be um, some cereals that you have oats um, rice uh, wheat bix cocoa pops if you buy them i don't know You'll have those things. You may even, if you're a baker, have things like flowers, ice sugar, um, coconut, whatever. And you will probably have some things in your fridge, butter, milk, cheese maybe, uh, pickles. Everyone seems to have a jar of pickles shoved at the back of the fridge somewhere. Mayonnaise, salad dressing of some kind. You might have some sour cream or some cream left those things. So think about those things and how you can use them for your bare bones grocery challenge. Um, my menu, I will tell you, is not for the long term. It's not sustainable over the long term. So don't think that eating what I've prepared, what I've listed as we what we would eat for that week would be... Um, nutritionally sound in the long term because it won't be it, it just won't be because I'm not a nutritionist for a start I just wrote down things that we like but anyway um, I've come up with a plan that includes breakfast so the breakfast is simple um, damper with an egg and fruit scrambled eggs over the toasted damper if you've never had real Australian damper, it's just divine. I don't know why we don't have it more often. And not that stuff you buy at the bakery. Real damper. And the recipe's here. I'll share it with you. A smoothie with potato cakes, cheesy muffins, um, pancakes. Pancakes cost about 60 cents to make 12. You can't, you can't get a breakfast that's much cheaper than that. Um, with some fruit, potato pancakes and a creamy rice pudding. And that can be um, for breakfast and it can be for dessert too. If you put some sultanas or some apricots in it, that's a nice dessert too. And I think most of us have probably had creamy rice at some stage in our lives. Um, if you've already got cereal, use it up. But remember with cereal, the serve. We tend to get the cereal bowl and the box of cereal and the chuk, 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 for good measure and then fill it to the top with milk because nobody likes crunchy. It's got to be covered with enough milk. And then, of course, we eat it. Well, that's probably the equivalent of three or four serves of cereal. If you really want to know how much a portion of cereal is or a serve size, look on the nutrition panel on the box and it will tell you. It's not a lot. It's usually about 20 grams. Yeah, about 20, 20 to 30 grams, depending on what the cereal is. Or as a treat, a one-off treat, when you're not doing the bare bones grocery challenge and you have some slush fund money, go and buy, and they're on sale, go and buy some of those um, individual serves of cereal. You can get them at Coles and Woolworths. Some health food shops have them. Sometimes the um, discount department stores have them. Sometimes the reject shop will have them you know, cornflakes, wheat bix, whatever, and have a look at just how much one serving of cereal is and then compare it to what you're eating and you'll be you'll be stunned. I know we did this while we are away, actually. Um, I gave Wayne Sultana Bran for breakfast and I just had 
um, left over from his Christmas stocking, um, his, uh, what are they called, variety packs that they get, the kids and Wayne get in their Christmas stockings each year. So I just whipped out the Sultana brand and I opened it and tipped it into his bowl and he just looked at it and said, well, that's one spoonful. Well, no, that's a serve of Sultana brand. So he was quite shocked at just how much he would have eaten if he hadn't, if I hadn't dished up that serve. But if he'd served himself, it would have been three or four times that much easily. And then the milk on top of it. And that actually makes cereal a very expensive breakfast, as well as if it's sugary, not so healthy. Um, then on this meal plan, I've combined um, lunches and dinners. So then mix and match. You can have pancakes for lunch if you want. You can have pancakes for dinner. You can top them with um, tinned mushrooms in butter sauce. You can top them with cheese. You can top them with spaghetti. You can top them with um, tuna mornay if you've got it, whatever. Um, but for the this meal plan, I've got savoury mince, a veggie pasta bake, baked potatoes with veggies, scallop potato and green veggies, Mexican meatballs and rice, vegetable soup, potato pie, fried rice, and I call them rice rissoles, and I grew up with these from my mum, so they are just delicious. Childhood memory for me, but they're really good, I'll tell you. Hello, who's here? Maureen. Hi, Maureen. Yes, nice to see from you. Hi, Coralie. Julian Rod. No, Julie, with um, Y2K, none of the extra things we bought went to waste either. In fact, we used um, up until uh, last year or the year before, we were still using the solar shower that we bought from the Regex shop. We used it when we went camping. Um, so Christine, sometimes it is a bit more difficult if there are dietary constraints in place. Yes, that's true. But again, this is just a guideline, and you know your diet. You know if you've got to be gluten free. You know if you've got to be dairy free. If you're watching sugar or whatever. If there's preservatives that you can't eat, this is probably a really good um, meal plan for you because there's very few in it. But you can adapt. You know, if you've got a dietary issue, you can adapt it. Take it and adapt it to what you um, need and make it work for you. And that's the, the great thing about it. It might cost you a dollar or two dollars more, or it could come in at four or five dollars less, but you've made it suit you. And that's, I think that's the attitude I want everyone to have. And, and Christine's sort of nailed it there, where she says, you know, she's found that there can be ways around certain things. Yes, there can be. And it, that's exactly, that's brilliant. I'm so excited that someone's got it because that's how it works. Um, you can do that without, um, I've lost the doobie to slide you down, sorry. Oh, there it is. No. No, up. Up. Yeah, no, yeah, no, down. Down yeah. a little bit. Folks, I'm technologically incompetent, you know that. Um, there we go. Christine, sultanas and dried apricots can be expensive. Um they tend to be a pantry staple in our house. Um, I am fussy about my apricots. I tend to like Australian apricots and so I only buy them hmm, maybe once a year, twice a year for special things. But sultanas I have all the time and I always have had. I'm perfectly happy to buy the um, Aldi sultanas or the Coles sultanas, the Woolly sultanas. Check them, check where they come from and usually they're really good. And, and quite inexpensive too. Um, yeah. And that works really well. But if you don't have them, don't put them in the rice. Simple as that. Use what you've got and use your $30 to expand it to make it work for you. Um, now, I wrote up a grocery list um, when I first did this way back when and... So the grocery list is pretty much the same. This is on a website and the link will be in the show notes at the bottom when we're finished. Um, so you'll be able to click on it and go over and get all this. You'll get the meal plan, the grocery list and even the recipes if you want them or some recipes that I've used. Um, 
when I did this um, shopping list back in 2017, it came into $26.10, so well under the $30. Going over it again today, um, the mints I bought was actually a dollar cheaper, a dollar a kilo cheaper. The macaroni is the same price. The cheese was the same price. The margarine was actually free because someone gave it to me. Um, milk's the same price. Potatoes are cheaper today than what they were two years ago. The onions were the same price. Carrots were the same price. The rice had gone up 20 cents. Um, and the eggs had actually come down 30 cents a dozen for what I can buy. Now, just because I can buy them at those prices, you may not be able to. I didn't source all those things from the one store this time either. I shopped around to find the best prices. So because I'm on $30, I've got to feed four people $30. I need to get the very best deal I can. So if that means I've got to go to two or three shops, then that's what I will do. And that's what you need to do too. So my notes, sorry, folks, I've got that um, there are lots of ways to bring down the amount you spend on groceries and they can be things like, huh, um, switching brands, don't be brand loyal unless it's something that you absolutely love. Um, coffee is my one thing. Coffee and now tea, yes, uh, two things that I am brand loyal to and I wait for that tea and coffee to come on sale. Now, the last time my tea was on sale at Coles for half price, I bought 20 boxes, mm -hmm. enough for a year for me, for my cups of tea because, yes, I do drink, tend to drink a lot of cups of tea. Um, Wayne likes a particular instant coffee, so when it is on half price sale, I snap it up and he only has one cup a day, sometimes two. So um, we only need three of those 500 gram tins in a year is more than enough for him for his coffee. But I wait till it's on half price sale and I snap it up. They're the only two things I'm brand loyal to. Anything else, I will try a cheaper brand. I will try, you know, and see if I don't like it, I could go back to the brand that I was buying before. And you can too. Always try it. Don't be afraid to try it. Just buy one to try. If it's really good, you've found something new and saving yourself some money. If you don't like it, you've only lost however much you spent on that item, the $1.70 or whatever on the biscuit slab or the cheese or whatever it is. And I said biscuits because Hannah, <laughs> Hannah informed me that Tim Tams are on half price at Coles this week, but it's too late. I've missed out on the sale. That's right, I bought 10 packets. But she stocked up. There you go. Um, right. So, hi, Michelle. Christine, it is amazing making things from scratch. People think it takes so long and they think it's so difficult. And it's not. Is that, is that, um, it's a real eye opener to think that. On a Thursday night here, the boys make their pizzas from scratch themselves. I do not do dinner on Thursday nights. Hannah usually gets dinner for herself and me and the boys look after themselves. So they'll go to the fridge and they'll drag out the sauce and the cheese and whatever else is in there um, to put on the top of it and do their bases and put them in the oven and bake them. And they can do the three pizzas because they eat one each, but they're um, in 16 minutes, which is faster than they can get it delivered. And they might run to about $2 each in cost by the time they've loaded them up with all the fillings because one likes mushrooms and one likes salami if we've got it and one likes some um, olives and someone else will have um, jalapenos on it. So they all do their own, but they average about $2 each. Um, and they are loaded pizzas and they often will not eat all of it and will put the remains in the fridge for the next day so that they have lunch or even dinner the next night, depending on what they're doing. Um, do 
you know what? Sometimes if husbands go shopping and they buy biscuits or cake, as long as it's not um, hurting the family, I don't have I don't have a problem with it. If if you can afford it, if it's not going to mean you can't pay the light bill or the kids aren't going to get milk that week or whatever, let them have it. You know, if it's if it's just the odd occasion, it doesn't hurt. It doesn't really matter. I know I love the Arnott's Lemon Crisp Biscuits. And sometimes I just, I don't have biscuits in the fridge, fridge or freezer ready to bake. I haven't got any cakes or muffins done. If I'm down the street and I see that packet of biscuits, I may just buy it. And I don't have a problem with that. I'm not taking money out of the grocery budget for other things. I'm not taking money away from the family. So our bills are paid. It doesn't hurt every now and then. If it's a regular occurrence and it's hurting the family, then a gentle conversation along the lines of please don't do that anymore might work. Um, but otherwise, you know, if it keeps him happy, and like you said, he does look, he does the cooking, if he's doing the shopping and the odd cake here and there or the odd packet of biscuits here and there, it might just be his treat and his way of saying thank you. I know we've got Valentine's Day coming up on Thursday and Wayne loves the Arnott's um, chocolate royals with the pink marshmallow. Have to be the pink marshmallow. They were on sale too. And Hannah just told me they were on sale too and you didn't buy any, did you? No, because no. it's not his birthday. It's Valentine's Day. So, My dad. so I... <laughs> I will I will get him a packet of those and leave them on his pillow for Valentine's Day for him. It's that and his birthday is the only time he gets them. Sometimes Father's Day, if one of the kids remembers. But they're his favourite thing. And it, it doesn't hurt every now and then. It's not a regular thing. So it's it I don't think it's as big an issue as it could be. If it's just the odd thing, don't worry about it. Um Started shopping in Aldi, cook from scratch. Here's what's in a high Priya. Oh, you've made it to the $300 a month challenge. Well done, Priya. That's amazing. That's really good. Welcome to that. You've been trying so hard. I've been following you in the forum. It's real. Oh, I'm so pleased. And hello to the Aussie housewife. She's new. Hope you like us and hope you keep coming back. Um, monthly shopping is the absolute best. When our children were little, when disaster struck, I had $200 a month to spend on groceries, buy the baby's food and one packet of disposable nappies. I would treat myself to one packet of disposable nappies. The... Um, uh, they were in a green packet from the chemist. They were the cheapest at the time. That's my that was my treat for the month. And I would do monthly shopping. And we would go on a Thursday night after Wayne came home from work, and he would have the three kids in one trolley, and I would have the other trolley with my shopping list and my calculator. And I walked up and down and up and down and up and down. And I knew to the cent how much each item cost. And I knew what that total would be at the checkout. And if something was more, had gone up since the last month, I had to either find a cheaper item somewhere else to make up the difference or put it back and find a cheaper substitute. But I loved monthly shopping, stayed out of the grocery store for four weeks. It was brilliant. Um, we were able to get milk delivered. So I had a milkman drop off milk twice a week. Um, that was part of our budget and so I didn't have to go near a supermarket, a butcher or a greengrocer for that month and it was bliss. I love it. The The longer I can stretch shopping out, the happier I am. Hi, Heather. And Rosalie, I've stopped buying muesli bars. They cost a fortune. Yes, they do, and you can make them so easily. Muesli bars are simple to make, and you know, um, in our in our new book, um, Hannah created a. Everyone's familiar with the um, bliss balls and the 
What are they called? I call them yum yum balls. We call them yum yum balls, but I think they're called bliss balls at health food shops and cafes and things. And you know, those big balls of stuff. And they're really expensive. <laughs> well, Hannah makes the best yum yum balls, and they cost about oh, under three dollars mm -hmm. to make. It's probably about fifty. Fifty. So so cheap and so good. So she makes those, and she puts some in a container where everyone can see them and eat them, and we have to hide the rest to ration them out. But they, they're really good. But muesli bars are the same thing. Look, my Anzac slice is pretty much a muesli bar. Um, cut it into fingers. If you really want to, you can drizzle some chocolate on the top or um, make a yogurt icing for the top and call it a muesli bar. Add some sultanas to it if you want to and call it a muesli bar. And it costs, um, the Anzac slice costs around $1.30 to make. $1.30, $1.35, depending on, I'd say $1.35 now because butter's gone up a bit. Um, on that note, folks, butter, um, for Victorian viewers, um, Not Quite Right has the um, Kerrygold unsalted two for, two for $3. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It worked out to about 60 cents cheaper per 500 grams anyway than the Aldi butter. Um, it is unsalted, but it's fine in baking. Um, I know some people don't like unsalted butter on their toast or their sandwiches or whatever. I don't, can't really tell the difference, but anyway. Um, but, yeah, so that's it. not quite right until Sunday, I think, um, if you're in Victoria. So and you need butter and butter freezers too. So who have we got? Hi, Barb. Um, uh, <laughs> Christine wants your recipe for yum yum balls. It will be in our new book. I promise you it will be in our new book. Until then, it's a secret. As she said, until then, it's a secret, but it's really good. We might be able to talk into sharing it maybe. Um Yeah, the Anzac slice is really yummy and it is really cheap. The recipe is on the website. So in the search bar, type in Anzac slice. It'll come up for you. Um, how much should oh, the Aussie housewife, how much should a family of four spend a week? How long is a piece of string? Um, it will depend on what you eat. It will depend on where you shop. It will depend on whether you have special dietary needs. Um, it will depend on whether you cook from scratch or not. Uh, pretty much we spend $80 a week. It averages out over the year to $80 a week on groceries for my family. There's five of us and they're five adults now. Um, but I cook mostly from scratch. Uh, we don't eat a lot of meat in terms of big portions I'm really I watch portion control quite strictly um, I bake biscuits and cakes except for lemon slice um, lemon crisp um, I bake our biscuits and cakes and puddings and things um, sometimes I will splurge and buy a tub of ice cream but only probably once a year at Christmas time if they want ice cream the rest of the year they either have to make it themselves or buy it themselves, and they do. Um, I shop all over the place. I shop at Aldi. For the, the bulk of my groceries come from Aldi, um, then Coles, then Woolworths. Now, Coles and Woolworths in that order simply because I have to go out of my way to get to a Woolworths. And if I have to go out of my way to do it, it's costing more in time and fuel than it than the savings. It has to be a really, really good half price sale for me to go to Woolworths to get something. Um, I have a really good fruit and veg greengrocer close by that his prices are excellent and his the quality of his produce is brilliant. So I'm happy to shop there for anything that we can't grow. And for meat, I do go about 10 minutes 
to um, Australian Butcher in Baronia here in Melbourne and stock up when they have their sales. I'll wait and wait. I usually buy meat once a quarter. So when we're getting towards the end of the quarter, I start looking at the sales to see what's coming up, what's cheap, whatever. Um, and then if they've got a couple of the things that I would normally buy on a really good sale, then we'll go and I'll do my meat shop. Um, I usually spend around $200 a quarter on meat and that will be mince, chicken fillets, corned beef if it's not too expensive, perhaps a leg of lamb but it has to be under $8 a kilo, um, one tray of sausages because we're not fans of sausages, it'll be sausage mince for sausage rolls, um, Whatever steak is the cheapest, I will usually buy a tray of that or if they sometimes have um, whole rumps or whole scotch fillets for a really good price, then I will get one and get the butcher to slice it and then I back seal it and portion it out for the rest of the year. Um, Wayne would eat steak every night if I gave it to him, but we can't afford that and we don't need that. Um, and usually roast whole chickens are usually really cheap. I've don't pay more than $4 a kilo, $3.99 a kilo, usually $2.99. When they come down to $2.99, I um, stock up. Hannah's thinking. Yeah, cold chickens are on sale at Coles this week, starting tomorrow for $2.90 a kilo. Whole chickens, uh, fresh or frozen? Fresh. Fresh whole chickens are on sale at Coles Time. this week, starts tomorrow for $2.90 a kilo. So, yeah. Great price. Um, I think the Steggles. Steggles, excellent. Okay, so that's a stock up price. And don't be afraid of buying a whole chicken because you can do a lot with it. You can roast it, but you can also cut it. Look, jump on YouTube or Google or whatever and look up how to do it. It's really simple to um, cut a chicken up. It doesn't take long to learn. And a good pair of scissors will help you or just a knife. If you haven't got scissors, use a knife. Um, it's really easy to do. You've got the drumsticks, the wings, you get the breasts. If you end up thighs. You end up with about eight pieces from a whole chicken if you want chicken pieces. Um, you then got the carcass to use for um, soups and stocks. Um, so a whole chicken it can be really good value. And, of course, if you roast it, don't forget to season it and stuff it so that it, you can stretch it and get even more meals out of it. Um, it's going to go more expensive because of the floods. Yes. Okay. So, yes, Priya, lentils are cheap. They're nutritious. And they've never been popular in Australia, but I love brown lentils and I love red lentils. I use those a lot. Um, I learned to make dal about, oh, finally learned to make dal about oh, 12 years ago maybe. Opened my eyes to a whole new way of using these amazing things. Any of the pulses, so lentils, beans, um, kidney beans, chickpeas or garbanzo beans, um, navy beans, whatever, they're all great um, sources of protein and they're all very, very versatile. Uh, one of the things is just still on beans while my mind's thinking. Um, one of the things that is a great meat stretcher is baked beans, just plain, ordinary, old, good old tin of baked beans in tomato sauce. Um, if you whiz them in the food processor, they'll look like mince and you can add them to mince to stretch it. So 500 grams of mince and a tin of baked beans whizzed up, mixed together, will double the quantity of the mince. So you've stretched it already for lasagna, for pasta sauce, um, tacos, haystacks, um, Stews, enchiladas, enchiladas burritos, meatballs, yeah, rissoles, meatloaf, anything like that. So you're doubling the quantity of the recipe, increasing the price by about 80 cents, I think, if you use Aldi baked beans. But you've boosted the nutrition too because baked beans are so good for you. 
full of fiber and really good things for you so it's just a little thing that i used to do quite often and the kids didn't know they do, and now. Things. <laughs> they, they do now yeah um Yeah, and Narelle sounds like me. She only goes to Aldi, then to Coles, and only to Woolies when dog food's on special. We don't have a dog, so I don't have to worry about that. But that's a really good um, good thing to do. Wow, $200 a week um, from the Aussie housewife. Look, if you really want to try and trim your grocery budget, do it gently because you don't look baby steps. Okay, so next week when you go shopping, Take out $180 in cash, and that's your grocery money for the week. Once you hit the $180 total, that's it. You can't spend any more money. Um, then the next week, you will take out $152. You've dropped it by 10% again, and you'll um, do your grocery shopping with that. And keep dropping that by 10% until you find you can't get what you need for that amount of money. Now, that will mean that you will need to do a decent pantry, fridge, freezer, inventory, take stock of what you've already got. You'll need to make a shopping list of what you actually need, not what you want, but what you actually need, and you will need to stick to it. Um, you will also need to not be brand loyal, so look for cheaper brands, look for alternatives, and you might find that you will need to go to a couple of different supermarkets. And this is where in this day and age we are so blessed because we can jump online and check the prices before we leave the house. So we will know if it's cheapest at Coles, cheapest at Woolies, cheapest at IGR, wherever, and we will know where to go to buy those things. Now, I write my shopping list in store order so that I know what I have to get at each store and that just makes it simple. I'm also a bit um, OCD and then I write it in order of the way the store's laid out so that I just go down the aisles one at a time and my list is in aisle order. You don't have to go that far if you don't want to. Yeah, Heather, beef is going to get really expensive. It was already getting expensive. It's going to be worse now. Um, Lamb is already outrageously priced. Um, go vegetarian. You know, just seriously, look, we eat too much meat. We eat too much red meat in this country. We don't need that much. So remember your portion sizes, piece of steak about the size of the palm of your hand or a piece of chicken about the size of the palm of your hand. That's all you need. Um, around 180 to 200 grams for an adult is the serving size. So that's all you need. And if you remember that, then perhaps meat can stay in your meal plan for a bit longer. Um, yes, I used to shop at Tasman. I used to buy my meat at Tasman Priya and it was it's good meat. It was really good meat, but now Australian butcher is actually closer to home, so I don't go to Tasman anymore. I had to, again, it was one of those, had to travel 15 minutes or so out of my way, the wrong direction to get there. So unless it was a really good sale, it would have to be a really good sale to get me to go there now. But they do have lovely meat. Barb says, yes, they are staggles, Hannah. Um, where did I just click some? Uh, yes, Christine, it does in, include toiletries and cleaning products. Um, I have six cleaning products in my house. Hmm. Yeah. Six cleaning products in my house. And they're not even actually cleaning products. They're ingredients to make cleaning products. Um, and toiletries... The kids buy their own now, so I'm only buying shopping for Wayne and myself. So our toothpaste, shampoo, conditioner, deodorants, um, my makeup and skincare all come on half price sales and we stock up. Hannah's really good at watching those half price sales for me and she will tell me. She also seems to know when I need to re redo the makeup and mm. the skincare and she'll tell me that it's time to get more. So we usually buy about a year's of 
year in advance for things like that. Um, toothbrushes. Um, if I find them on a half price sale, a really good sale on toothbrushes, sometimes you can pick up them, pick them up a dollar, a dollar each, the Colgate and Oral B toothbrushes. Sometimes Coles will have them for a dollar each. I just about clear the shelf and then I just fill both bathroom cupboards with them and everyone can help themselves to those. Um, uh, the boys buy their own razors. Actually, they both have electric shavers, don't they? Yeah, so, um, yeah, my $80 a week does include toiletries and cleaning products for us. Uh, yeah, Maureen, bananas will jump. Anything coming from Queensland is going to at least triple in price um, in terms of fruit and veg, meat, dairy products, anything like that coming from Queensland will just be so expensive because it won't exist. Um, and what they do have left, you know, it, it's going to be a seller's market, not a buyer's market in terms of that. So try and for your fruit and veg, try and shop locally and buy locally. It's one reason why I like my greengrocer. He doesn't have the range that the big guys down the road have but he buys locally. So what he buys for the most part is Victorian. Um, there's a little bit that comes from interstate if he, if it's a reasonable, pro reasonable price in season and he can source it easily, it will come from interstate. And it's in season. If it's out of season, you can't get it from him. So, you know, he keeps, his range is limited, but it's always fresh, it's always cheap. And it's in season. And I tend to think that if we eat with the seasons, then we're going to eat healthfully and properly because, um, oh, how do I explain it? It's um, almost like eating what we need when we need it. Um, we need all the summer fruits and the um, tomatoes and things like that in summer to build up our um, immune, system. immune system ready to fight winter then we need the um, goodness of the winter veggies to keep us going through the winter into spring ready for the next to face the next summer it's um, I don't, it, it's just I don't know seasons I guess if we eat with the seasons and we eat to the seasons it'll save us money but it's also better for us it's more healthy um, <laughs> baked beans in the mint works wonders and honestly if you whiz them in the food processor or with a stick blender and just sort of pulse them they will break down till they look like the little bits of mints and there won't be an issue they disguise themselves beautifully and they absorb the flavor of whatever you're cooking so if you're doing a curry they'll take on the flavor of the curry if you're doing um pasta they'll taste a pasta sauce they'll taste like the pasta sauce it's a great idea mm. i love my greengrocer too maureen or the, the store not actually the greengrocer although he's, he's very nice but you know um the reject shop is really good for finding toiletries especially toiletries cosmetics on sale often cleaning products if you like to buy um, toilet cleaners and things like that from the reject shop you'll often get brand names um, at good prices um, just be aware that they're often what are called parallel imports so made for overseas under that brand name usually to the same um, specifications but sometimes you might need to check um, Yes, lentils in mints. I put lentils, um, look, one of my favourite winter soups, or any time of the year soups, is so quick and easy and it's simply a tin of brown lentils and a tin of tomato soup with a tin of water. Just make the tomato soup up like you do and add the brown lentils in, but let it simmer slowly um, so the soup um, cooks off just a little until it thickens 
delicious. Absolutely delicious. Really good soup. I'm not a fan of, Christine asks about buying products online. Sometimes they're really cheap, but they're often not what she's used to. I tried it um, when um, I've forgotten the name of that website started, that crazy deals one that I tried Catch it. Catch of the day. Catch of the day. Tried it. Again, didn't like it because I don't buy, I don't buy cleaning products. I don't buy a lot of convenience groceries. Um, you still have to pay a delivery fee. You can't actually see what you're getting in terms of, and if it's something that you're not familiar with, you have to buy it, you're stuck with it. It's a big risk. I'm not a fan of it, which is not to say that it doesn't suit lots of people because it obviously does. It's a very popular um, form of shopping. But I'd rather stick with what I know or if it's going to be something new, I like to be able to see it, touch it, smell it, taste it, squeeze it, twist it, pull it, whatever, so that I, I'm i sure I'm confident then in what I'm buying. Um, but again, because I don't buy a lot of, you know, I don't buy toilet cleaners, I don't buy floor cleaners, and I don't buy window cleaners, and I don't buy fancy floor mops and stuff like that. It just doesn't work for us. Um I don't buy a lot of makeup. I don't wear a lot of makeup. So I don't buy a lot of makeup. I don't, you know, I water down the shampoo and the conditioner. So a 900 ml bottle of shampoo lasts us 12 months because I water 50 50 with water. Same with the conditioner. Um, so um, I'm not a fan of those sorts of, of, of websites. Um, and online shopping. Now, if it was craft stuff, paper, cardstock might be different. But um, yeah, for groceries, I'm not. I'm not a huge fan. It doesn't. It doesn't suit me. It doesn't work for me because of the way I shop and the way we live. But if it works for you, and you're happy to do it, and it, again, you can afford to do it, then there's no reason why you shouldn't. Um, Very hungry teenage boys. I had two of those. They've grown into very hungry adult men. Um, popcorn. Best present my kids ever got was from my cousin and his wife. They gave the three of them a popcorn maker, an electric popcorn maker, hot air popcorn maker. Love that machine. The kids can leave home, but they've got to leave me the popcorn machine. It's brilliant. Popcorn is cheap. It's quick to do and it's healthy. It also um, fills them up really quickly. You know, a lid, a small lid of popcorn makes a huge bowl that they can snack on and it fills them up really quickly without, um, without putting them off their meals. So if they come in from school and this or sport and they're starving, popcorn's a good way to fill them up, but they'll still be able to eat their dinner with their meat and veg. Um, or... No, seriously, when Thomas was going through growth spurts, wheat bix, two wheat bix in a bowl with some milk, that kept him going. Um, and no name wheat bix, Aldi wheat bix are, are quite cheap um, as a snack. Or even split them. Who remember? Whoever had split wheat bix with butter and jam? Yeah, Hannah's got her arm up. They can't see you, darling. Um, mm -hmm with butter and jam after school, yum. Or even, you know, we used to sometimes take it for our school lunch. So that worked really well. Or um, I'm not a fan of fruit leathers and roll-ups and stuff like that for snacks um, because they're just so loaded with sugar and they're so expensive. But if you can make them yourself, you know, they're not actually that difficult to make. If you have a dehydrator, they're not this difficult at all to make. So they might work. Or the other thing I used to do was make a dip and we'd have veggie sticks or a dip with fruit. And it depended. The dip with veggie sticks was simply plain yogurt and a quarter of a packet of French onion soup. Whip, 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 stir it up. And then we do celery, 
carrots um, and cucumber and let them dip into that. And for the fruit one, I used cottage cheese with a little drizzle of honey and some chopped mint, whipped it up, and they would have apples or banana, oranges, strawberries, whatever, to dip into it for that. And that seemed to fill them up too without um, interfering with their, their real meals. And those things aren't expensive um, to make or buy. Make, look, if you haven't tried making yogurt yet, it costs less than a third the price to make a kilo of yogurt. It's really simple. If you make plain yogurt, you can then use it in place of sour cream um, in your recipes and you can flavour it with whatever you like to have on your cereal or as a snack. Um, what do I use for cleaning the toilet? Okay, vinegar or Miracle Spray, and once a week, and please don't get upset about this, but once a week, both toilets get a squirt of um, Domestos. It's not Domestos, it's the oldie version of Domestos, the thick bleach cleaner, um, usually in the first thing in the morning, and then I go back in after a couple of hours, give, it a, give them a scrub, a flush, and they're cleaned. Otherwise, it's a slurp of vinegar or a squirt of Miracle Spray, and um, a scrub and a flush. And it works. Um, nothing fancy. I don't use um, window cleaners. I have two glass cloths, two microfiber glass cloths. I wet one and I keep one dry. I use the wet one to wash the windows and mirrors and the dry one to wipe them over and they're clean and streak free. Now that works on the shower screens too and they lift the um, soap scum beautifully. Uh, smoothies are great for hungry kids um, they're especially good if you've got fruit to use up yogurt to use up milk to use up um, you, can, you can add just about anything to a smoothie Maureen I think is a smoothie queen She's, she does lots of smoothies who is Adam's eating <laughs> Okay, so, right, anyway, back to the Bare Bones Groceries. Sorry, folks, I get sidetracked easily. Um, look, I've put recipes for these, um, for the meal plan, for the Bare Bones meal plan. I've written out the recipes. There's simple things like baked bean supreme, um, my basic meat sauce, and it is very basic. This is my in a hurry, need it right now without breaking the budget meat sauce. Um, and it's uh, it costs about 84 cents a serve. Um, so, and it's just minced tomato soup, tin tomatoes, an onion, pinch of mixed herbs, and some crushed garlic really cheap, really easy, really quick. Now I use the tomato soup, the tin of tomato soup, um, because it's not as rich as tomato paste. When my children were small, the, using tomato, I used to always use tomato paste in my pasta sauces. The tomato paste was too rich for them and they didn't like it. I swapped tomato soup and it's just stuck. They love it now. So um, and it doesn't have to be a tin. You can make it make it yourself if you like to. And tomato well, tomato soup's really just tomato paste and milk or cream or half and half. So you can make it yourself if you want to. Um, it's just as easy for me to have a tin and bung it in. And that's really a simple, very simple sauce. Um, I also have on my blog. Um, another version of my meat sauce that I do in the slow cooker, which is really nice too. Now, that meat sauce I use for spag bowl. I use it for lasagna. I use it for pasta bake. Um, I just add a few different things to it. So spag bowls usually as it is over hot noodles, bit of cheese on top. Um, pasta bake, 
I might add some grated carrots and grated zucchini, um, diced eggplant if I have it. Um, in lasagna, I will do um, the sauce, a layer of noodles, sauce, a layer of noodles. Then I do the um, bechamel sauce, layer of noodles, meat sauce, and so on, and layer it up until I've used all the meat sauce, layer of noodles, then a layer of bechamel, and then bake it and just before we're ready to take it out of the oven I sprinkle it with cheese and let it brown that's that's my version of lasagna nothing authentic about it but it's really good everyone likes it and it's cheap um muffins who is oh, Aussie housewife muffins um they don't have to be sweet they can be savory so cheese sure. Cheese and chives, they could be um, zucchini, um, zucchini and cheese, ham, ham and cheese, whatever, um, or scones, yeah. scones, simple as. And look, if you want sweet scones, you use three cups of flour, a tin of lemonade and a bottle of cream. If you want savoury scones, it's three cups of flour and a 600 ml bottle of cream. Mix it up together. So simple, spread them out, bake them. Now, with scones, my I learned from CWA ladies, with scones, when you put them on the tray, if they are just touching on the edges, they rise so much better. They rise up and they're nice and, and um, high. So try that. Um, and scones can be as they are. They can be with butter. They can have butter and honey, butter and jam, jam and cream, or cheese or you can slice them if they're really high slice them into three and make little pizzas out of them so that's a squirt of tomato sauce a sprinkle of mixed herbs and some grated cheese and grill them and I used to do that for the kids all the time and they love their little pizzas so that's a really good way of using up stale scones too um, they were good. They were good, yes. Oh, I've never given you anything that's not good. Some do. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah. Yes, Priya, only miracle spray of vinegar in the toilet. Um, once once a week, I give them a squirt with bleach, but that's it. Um. Hi, Liana. Um, yes, mooring in the corn and rice quickie, of course. Marmite, Vegemite, Promite, whatever your might is. Um, you can, um, yes, by all means, if you've got Vegemite and you don't have Marmite, use Vegemite. It's not not an issue at all. It's it's what you prefer. Um, uh, Jody, well, what have you missed? A meal plan, a whole lot about um, snacks, um, all sorts of things. You'll have to watch the replay, <laughs> see what's coming up. Um, oh, thank you, Julie. Oh, it's nice to know that someone gets something from it. Some, I wonder sometimes. I'm so full of, of my mind goes constantly and I get off track very easily. So bring me back on track. Happy to do that. Um, but I'm glad um, if it's helpful to someone. In the recipes, on the bare bones recipes, some of them, such as the creamy rice pudding, one of the ingredients is six cups of milk. Now that's one and a half litres of milk. If you have milk powder, you can use one and a half cups of milk powder and five cups of water to make that six cups of milk up. Don't use your fresh milk if you don't have to. Um, and ditto with the damper. It has one and a quarter cups of milk. So you use one cup of milk powder plus one tablespoon of milk powder into one cup of water um, for the damper. Um, and this is just a plain damper. It's not a beer damper. If you want a really nice um, savoury damper, 
use um, three cups of self-raising flour, a pinch of salt and a tin of beer and mix it up and then bake it. Um, now mix it into a loaf shape, you know, the damper shape, the round damper shape and put it on, um, put it in your oven. Now, if we were doing this around the campfire, I'd have already had the camp oven on the um, coals heating. So put your tray, put your baking tray in the oven to heat and then sit, um, flour it and sit your damper on the flour and then put it into the oven to bake and you'll get a nice, nice golden bottom. It won't stick to the tray and it should cook evenly all the way through if you do that. Now, damper's really easy to make. Anyone can do it. You can have it fresh as bread for sandwiches. You can toast it. Um, you can have it with sweet things like jam or honey or Nutella or whatever. Excuse me. Or you can have it savoury things, peanut butter, Vegemite, um, cheese, tomato, whatever you like. You can have it with soups and stews as a side. Um, make pizzas out of it, little individual pizzas. It's a really versatile thing that um, is made really quickly, really easily and doesn't cost a lot. It costs about, to make a damper about, mm, not quite the size of a dinner plate, costs around a dollar. You know, and that's, that's, um, that's quite a lot of bread um, or a bread food if um, you need it in a hurry. It doesn't take long to bake in the oven either. So, <gasps> okay. Glad you're enjoying the show, Heather, and you too, Rosalie. Okay. Reducing grocery bill, quite a challenge. As I should. Okay, well, it shouldn't really be. Now, here's why. Because you're still going to do the same process. You're going to do a pantry, fridge and freezer inventory. You're going to make up a meal plan and a shopping list. All you're going to do is take your meal for tomorrow night and find out what ingredients you have to buy to make that meal. And they're the ingredients you will buy. You won't buy anything else, just the ingredients for that meal. Um, if you find that you need, for instance, um, you will have um, cheese, um, tomatoes and mince that you will need for three meals, I would suggest that you buy them once and put them in the fridge ready for the other, other two nights and that's it. it. Your grocery bill shouldn't cost any more doing it that way. It's, it's in the planning, not necessarily... Um, because you have to shop in every day it shouldn't cost you any more. It is in the planning. You just need to plan it. And I know that that will take time. It will take you 10 or 15 minutes once a week perhaps to do that. But if it's going to save you $20, $30, $40, $50 a week, that's well worth it. So, you know, think about doing that instead of um, planning on the fly meal planning on the fly make your meal plan see what you need to buy and then shop each day for just the things that you need so you'll make your shopping list but you'll break it down into days what you need to buy and that should be an easy way to do it for you um yes christine you can get lactose free milk powder i um you will have to do a hunt for it it is available but it's not common. Um, you could look in the um, health aisles of bigger Coles or Woolworths supermarkets. Oh, yeah, and ask at health food shops. They should be able to order it in for you. Even pharmacies. Ah, or even a pharmacy. There you go. Heather, um, Heather. Hannah suggested um, trying a pharmacy um, for it and see if they can help you. But, yeah, it is available. It's just not common. I used to make bread and rolls all the time, uh, Jodie, and I got out of the habit of it. 
what happened was my bread machine broke. Then the lovely Carol gave me um, her machine broke. The part of her machine that broke wasn't the part of my machine that broke, so we were able to swap bits and I had a bread machine again and I was happily making bread and I just got out of the habit of it. When I got sick, um, I just didn't have the energy to do bread all the time. Since um, Christmas, I've made a few loaves and I would like to get back into making our bread every day. Um, it, it really, with the bread machine, it's not that difficult. Um, and it, okay, I was going to say it's not necessarily cheaper than buying bread, but it's nicer bread and I can add stuff to it if I want to to make it healthier. And I tended to play around with the recipes and make them a bit my own to suit us too. I um, do um, pizza bases from scratch, scrolls, all those sorts of things. Um, and I quite like baking with yeast. I like the magic of yeast. It's, it's, um, it's, I don't know what it is about it, but you've got this sort of lump and all of a sudden it just grows and expands and turns into something really delicious that makes the house smell divine so yeah I do sometimes and it's one of the things I'd like to get back into in fact one of my goals for this year is to master sourdough so I'm working on that at the moment um your baker's flour at Costco has gone up Rosalie I was at Costco last night and I was stunned at the increase in the, 88 cents. Of, uh, I was euro. stunned at the cent at the um, price of flour at Costco. It's gone up 12 cents a kilo, no, 14 cents a kilo um, since Christmas. Uh, <laughs> sold you. Did we get a good price, Maureen? Sorry. Um, uh, my bread machine, oh, look, Christine, Wayne um, did an after-hours job one Sunday afternoon and it was, he was gone for ages, he's gone for, oh, he's gone for hours, I'm thinking, oh, he's going to be really cross when he gets home because this has been a terrible job or something. Anyway, he came home, he was so excited, he had this bread machine for me. Oh, bread machine, thank you, darling. I didn't know I wanted a bread machine. Um, my husband's a softy. He's gone to do this lockout job and it was an older couple. They were in their 80s and they'd locked themselves out of their unit and they were all upset. And, and then um, because he has a strict no credit card policy um, on these after-hours calls, then they didn't have a credit card and they didn't have cash, so they couldn't pay him. So he said, oh, look, don't worry about it. Just, you know, write me a check. Didn't have a check. So the lady said she had a bread machine that she was going to sell for $25. Would he take that instead? So <laughs> being the soft touch that he is, he turned down $120 for a $25 bread machine, but the old couple was happy. They got into their house. He did his good deed for the day and he brought me home a bread machine and that's how I got into my bread machine. So that first one lasted us for a long time and it finally wore out. It just blew up. So then I bought another one from Aldi and it went for a really long time and it was one of the ones with the proper shaped long loaf. It was really good. So I wore that one out. So about two years ago, we went on the hunt for another one and we hunted high and low and we ended up with a sunbeam from Maya on a half price sale. So it was around the same price as the Aldi unit was originally and it's been brilliant too. If you're going to use it, it's a great investment. Now mine does um, the breads obviously and bakes it, but I can also use the dough setting and it has the jam making setting. Now, I don't never use the jam making setting, but I know some of our members have on their bread machines and they swear by it. So I might give that a go one day, but honestly, jam making is so simple, I'm not sure that 
why I'd bother. But anyway, um, if you're going to use it, by all means, hunt around. Try and get a second-hand one. Look at the op shops. Try and find one at a garage sale. You shouldn't pay any more than $20 or $25 for it if it's second-hand to try it. And that way, if it works, you'll know when it wears out that it's worth investing in um, in another unit. Hannah's going like this at me and telling me I've talked too long. So over an hour, oh, gosh. Yep. I'm so, Coralie, I'm so glad you like the yogurt. Is it, you'll never buy yogurt again if you make your own. It's so worth it. Um, look, Rosalie, scrolls are so easy to make and it doesn't have to be a yeast dough, just a scone dough, roll it out. And if you're making sweet scrolls, all I do is... Um, Brush the dough with melted butter, sprinkle it with brown sugar, roll it up and then cut it, put them in, in into a round tin. Seems to be the secret to get them to be, again, like the scones, if they're touching, they rise better and bake them. And when they come out of the oven, I straight away pour the glaze over the top so that it soaks. Yeah, they're so good. They're Tom's favourites. He loves those. But cheese and Vegemite, cheese and ham, plain old Vegemite, plain old cheese, really easy to do how do i process my homemade jams and other preserves okay jam i don't process so i do it the way my mother did hot jam into hot jars lids on straight away and as they cool you can hear the pop or the poop as it seals and that's good enough for the jam with my pickles um, zucchini pickles and tomato relish and stuff hot water bath for 10 minutes same thing hot relish or hot pickles into the jar put the lid on into a hot water bath for 10 minutes um, and they seem to last for years that way um, that's the way mum did it and that's the way I was taught to do it so okay Let's know how you go with your challenge, Barb. All right, I have talked for well over an hour. Sorry, folks, didn't mean to keep you this long. Don't forget to like our channel, subscribe. Please give us a thumbs up. The more thumbs up we get, the better it is for everybody. Um, subscribe, and that way you'll always be alerted to when we've got a new video coming up. And please share because when we get to 1,000 subscribers, we will have a really super fantastic fun prize. And there was something else I was going to say. Oh, yes, we have our new book. Oh, Sally um, asked if we'd be taking orders, pre-orders for the new book. Yes, we will, but not until closer to release date. Um, but, yes, we will happily take pre-orders for the new book. And I'll gladly, I'll talk about that in detail later, closer to the date. I'll do that for you. Oh, yes. And if you've got a question, in the show notes, there's a link to the ask a question and I'll try and answer it on the show for you. Um, I think that might be it for tonight. Mm -hmm. um, jo oh, sorry, Jody. if you don't have a rack, a round cake rack will do. If you can get one that fits. Or a trivet, you know, a pot trivet, something like that will work just as well. Um, and if you don't have one, look at the op shops. They're bound to have something um, that will, will be suitable. Anything to just lift the bottles up off the base of the pot will work wonders. And you'll be able to do your hot water bathing for your preserves. Um, okay, I'd better go. Um, I'll see you all on Thursday night when we'll be doing something in the kitchen. I don't know what yet because I'm not that organised this week. <laughs> okay, thanks and bye.